Dear viewers of the Tom Photo channel, do you like small gear and high tech that lets you do more with less effort? How about a flash that is tiny, rechargeable, capable, easy to control? In that case, I might have something cool to show you. Today I'm looking at the Godox IT30 Pro Flash and see what it can and cannot do. You can certainly take some great photos with it, sometimes better than with larger flashes simply because this one fits in your pocket, while a big flash often stays at home when you're out shooting. For transparency, this flash was sent to me free of charge, but as always, you get an honest review from me. The flash comes in a small package with a carrying bag, charging cable and manual. The manual took me 5 minutes to read and was actually helpful. It mentions a firmware upgrade, but the company does not recommend doing that right now, so best leave it. Everything works fine out of the box. The flash itself feels solid and durable. It has three buttons, a dial, and a side button that flips an internal diffuser into place for wide-angle shots. The hot shoe connector is metal, which is always welcome, though it sits slightly off to one side. On cameras with a centered hot shoe it looks a little offset, but on my Fuji XE2 for example it aligns perfectly. The flash is very small, smaller than my GoPro Hero 10 Black, and from a distance they even look a bit similar. It's light as well, with a built-in rechargeable battery that cannot be replaced, so let's hope it lasts for years. There's also a small hot shoe lock button, which you must press fully when detaching, and note the flash needs to be mounted on the camera for all functions to work correctly. My version is the IT30 Pro F, with F standing for Fujifilm. Versions for Canon, Nikon, Sony and Olympus are also available. To power it on, hold the bottom button and swipe the touchscreen. I'm not a big fan of touchscreens in cold weather with gloves, but Godox solved that with a large dial that duplicates most touchscreen functions, and I really like that. I wish my GoPro had that too. The menu is intuitive. You can swipe and press, or use the menu button, select button and dial. To use it as a single flash, just select normal flash. Modes include manual, TTL and multi. In TTL, the flash calculates its own strength, but you can still adjust easily. In manual, power ranges from 1 over 1 down to 1 over 128 in third stop increments. The screen is bright and uncluttered with large clear numbers. High speed sync or HSS works up to 1 over 8000 of a second. In this mode the flash fires many rapid bursts during the exposure, letting you use shutter speeds faster than your camera's native sync. The output is weaker in this mode but the flash handles the timing automatically. There is an icon to turn on the HSS, but on my Fuji X-T30, HSS is engaged automatically when needed. If you buy the Sony version, you get something called Global Shutter Sync, shooting up to 1 over 80,000 of a second. This sounds pretty hard to believe, actually. And it's an advanced technology unique to Sony, allowing flash synchronization at any shutter speed. Battery life is good, on paper about 560 full power pops on a charge, with a recycle time of 1.5 seconds at full strength. Charging is done via the included cable. The guide number is 15 at ISO 100. This is not huge, but usually enough for casual use, especially since the IT30 Pro integrates with the Godox 2.4 GHz X wireless system. That means it can act as a master or a receiver, triggering other flashes and being triggered itself. This is my favorite feature and makes the flash very desirable, because it ties my whole Godox ecosystem into one setup. You can toggle between normal, master and receiver mode. In master mode, for example, I can control my Godox V862F, which is an advanced flash. And setup is easy. Open the connectivity menu, Pick your channel and group. I usually use channel 1, group B. If you don't want the IT30 firing itself, deselect its own group, which is group M. Make sure the GR mode is active for full control of the strength of the receiver flash. Then set the same channel and group on your receiver flash. 
On my V860, you can see how its power changes when I adjust it on the IT30. If your receiver doesn't fire, double check that wireless is enabled and that it's in slave mode. To use the IT30 as a slave itself, set sender in the flash type menu. With this setup, you can fire two flashes together or separately, even up to 100 meters apart. You can also choose a shorter range, 0 to 30 meters, which is useful for macro when flashes are very close. Selecting the right range is important. If things behave oddly like flashes not switching on or off, recheck that menu. Now to my experiments that I like to do with all new flashes. I'm using the Fuji XT30 for all of my experiments and it needs to be in mechanical shutter mode for the flash to work. With this camera, normal flash sync is up to 1 over 250 of a second, as I've shown in my previous videos. Beyond that, the IT30 automatically goes into HSS. I tested this by photographing a painting at different shutter speeds. At 1 over 250, the exposure darkens suddenly, since the flash splits into bursts. And because I kept all settings fixed, the light looks weaker now. To compensate, I'd need to do manual adjustments or else use the TTL mode. I did this test just to confirm where HSS kicks in. And now I know. Next, I compared the Godox IT30 Pro to the built-in flash of my camera using the Fuji XF 18 to 55 mm lens at 18 mm. I set the exposure for the built-in flash at full power, then used the same settings with the IT30 Pro and varied its strength. The Godox IT30 Pro is noticeably stronger. For an outdoor test, I shot a dark tree trunk 10 meters away, 18 mm focal length, shutter speed 1 over 60, f-stop 2.8, ISO 400, with the IT30 at maximum power and no diffuser. To analyze the wide-angle coverage of the flash, I used my Samyang 12mm f2 and photographed the white ceiling with a diffuser. I compared it to my larger Godox TT523 flash, also with diffuser. Using my own software, I measured corner to center fall off, which was 57% for the IT30 and 59% for the TT523. So the IT30 is looking even a little bit better. Note that the IT30 produced a more circular pattern and performed surprisingly well for such an extreme lens. People don't typically use 12mm lenses in their photography. Please check out my video to learn more about this method, the link is below. I also like to measure flash trigger voltage, which came out around 3 volts for this flash, which is perfectly safe for modern cameras. Again, I have a special video in the links on what trigger voltage means and how to measure it. It's most important with retro flashes, which oftentimes have trigger voltages too high for your camera's health. One limitation. Small flashes sometimes get blocked by large lenses or hoods casting a shadow. Godox sells a riser to lift the flash higher, and it works well. There's much to love about the Godox IT30 Pro. I'm especially excited about the wireless functions. They alone make me want this flash. Add its small size, sturdy build, and clear modern interface, and I feel ready to sell some of my other flashes, and center my system around the IT30 Pro. From now on, this little flash will live in my pocket as my main daytime fill flash, especially for my Fuji X-T3 which doesn't have a built-in flash at all. Thank you so much for watching, please consider subscribing and liking, it really helps my work. If you have more questions about the IT30 Pro, leave them in the comments. Enjoy your flash photography and see you soon, goodbye.